Hello. It is I, Freezer700, here again. And now we are talking about a chapter. Much like the Marines Malevolent. And the fact that they have total disregard for human life. This chapter, though, is rather different. This chapter I find a little bit more interesting. Because this chapter actually has fucking lore to it. Whereas the Marine Malevolent, we just have a small glimpse of lore. Maybe like three paragraphs. So... Here we are with the Karkaradons, or as you most likely know them, the Space Sharks. So what are they? Well in High Gothic, which is more like rich people speaking, they are known as the Karkaradons. Ostra. But in Low Gothic, that translates to Space Sharks. Now this chapter is a fleet based chapter. Now there's two theories as to where they originated from. One is that they originated from the Raven Guard. In that they share the same chapter's colors. Not colors of armor though. We're talking about colors of skin. Now with the Salamanders, they have that pitch black skin. With the Raven Guard, they have pale skin. And that is why people theorize that the Space Sharks are the Raven Guard is that they share that pale, deathly skin tone. Now they suffer from a Gene C degeneration, where they're at risk of mutation, but they possess black eyes, vicious nature, and total disregard of civilians. This might also lend them credence to being part of the Raven Guard, but the Raven Guard are pretty neutral towards civilians. They don't disregard them to this extent. The second theory is that they could have came from the White Scars. After all, after the Horus Heresy, the Raven Guard were too depleted to have made a chapter like this. But the battle tactics of the Space Sharks, or the Karkaradons, whichever preferred term you use, their military tactics are almost reminiscent of a White Scars tactic, which is fast. They like to be speedy, but there's a difference. They do not use war bikes, and they don't use their tanks, whereas the White Scars use those all the time. Instead, the Karkaradons prefer fast deployment, yes. They prefer close quarters, yes. But they prefer massive infantry. They do not prefer to use their armor units. Even though they possess an unusually high amount of dreadnoughts, they don't prefer to use them. Instead, they use lightning strikes and reconnaissance to win every battle. To which kind of makes me talk about their military deployment. How are they usually deployed? Well, the Codex Astari, they are somewhat aligned with in that they deploy a normal battle company. But this is a little skewed. The deployment is a little unusual in the fashion. They deploy normal scouts, yes, but the scouts are deployed with the assault marines. The assault marines are the marines who have the jetpacks and are designed for close quarters combat. But the space sharks don't call them assault marines, they call them devourers. And then with the assault marines and the scouts, there's a third group that's deployed with this group, and they are called the Terminators, also known as the Red Brethren. Now this is a very unusual because Terminators are slow, and to use them for fast deployment is kind of hard to pull off, but this chapter does it with precision. Now when they attack, they don't stay for very long. They don't hit hard and stay. They don't hit hard and try to push through you if they can't win. If you're outmaneuvering them, like getting behind their Terminators, or you are just way too impenetrable for them to get through, whether that's through massive numbers or through just being tanky as hell, they're going to pull back at a moment's notice. Except when they pull back, they're going to attack you again, but from a different spot. The reason why is that they are trying to find a weakness. Much like real sharks out in the ocean. They're going to jab at the whale until they find a weak spot. But once they hit that weak spot, blood is in the ocean. And like all sharks, 
they will begin a feeding frenzy. And with that being said, once the space sharks have found your weakness, they will deploy en masse to the weak spot and annihilate the enemy thoroughly. If they can't annihilate you fully by attacking your weak spot, then they'll pull back. And then while you're trying to reorganize yourself, they're going to attack again from a different spot. Because now you're going to be too focused about your other weak spot to realize that you left another weak spot behind you. Now, despite this rather sophisticated strategy and what seems like a very successful chapter, they have a very colorful history. Their armor is actually old, much like the Marines Malevolent. They have very old armor. This leads me personally to theorize that they may have pissed off a little bit too many people. And we're going to delve into why they piss off people. Because unlike the Marines Malevolent, these guys actually have good lore on them on why they piss people off. So what armor do they use? They use Mark V heresy pattern armor. Their Terminators are old too, but their Terminators are still as combat effective as modern Terminators because their Terminator armor is modified. Extremely modified. So that way they're still combat worthy. Like their Chapter Master has combat with his uh, power blades, but his power blades on his Terminator armor are hooks. So that way he's able to pry off the armor of the enemy and stab him where it hurts. It's still crude, but it's effective. It makes him still combat worthy. So, let's get on to how they piss people off. How does the Space Sharks piss people off? They're loyal. They're not total dickheads. They still don't like humans. They disregard civilian life. But how much exactly? Well, let's talk about how they recruit people. When it comes to recruiting, they do it known as red tithes or red teeth. Now, red teeth are when they attack an Imperial world. That's right. They actually attack the Imperium. But they don't attack the Imperial Guard. They attack the civilians. They massacre many and take a lot of them as slaves to serve them as servitors. But the strongest of these slaves will be taken as initiates. Now you may think, how do they get away with this without being declared a traitors or renegades? Well, that's just it. This Space Marine chapter serves a very necessary role in society. They're like the Night Haunters. They're what the original night haunters were supposed to be the night lords were supposed to fill this role of these boogeymen where if you're an imperial citizen and you commit crime the space sharks might knock on your door to serve justice and that is what the space sharks are supposed to do they're supposed to provide terror into the civilian populations if you behave nicely the space sharks may go eat some other fish. If you behave terribly. Well, the space sharks don't kill you with hatred. They kill you with cold, cunning, thought out methods. They may not torture you like those night lords, but they definitely leave a bloody paste where your family used to be. But, while they're invading the Imperial worlds, they may actually do a Grey Tithe. And when they do Grey Tithes, this is how they obtain new armor and new tech. So what's a Grey Tithe? Well, on Imperial worlds, there usually is these things known as Archaeotechs, which is another term for archaeological technologies. These technologies are ancient, but they're still, still technologically advanced for Imperial standards. And the tech priests of Mars, being the tech fetishist that they are, much like the Brotherhood of Steel and Fallout, well, what the Grey Tithes are is the Space Sharks will go to a world and scour the world for any ancient technologies, ancient relays, ancient cloning vats, ancient anything. 
It could be an ancient space dildo. And the tech priests on Mars will give them new weapons, new armors, maybe even vehicles in exchange for this piece of technology. Whether or not they're going to go fuck themselves with it is up to be determined. But it's still interesting to speak about this. Now what about the colors of the space sharks? Well, the colors that they use are gray. Dark gray. And usually they have a red stripe on their helmets. Their red stripe doesn't really symbolize anything, it's just a red stripe to differentiate them from other gray space marines. But besides that, I just find them interesting in that during the Badab War, which was a nasty war between the Lamenters, the Minotaurs, many, many space marine chapters, star phantoms and mantis warriors, what happened was a few space marine chapters went chaos. Now, not all the space marine chapters knew this, like the Lamenters. The Lamenters were defending the chaos space marine chapters, and when they were defending the chaos space marine chapters, they thought that it was because the enemy was chaos. Well, the Karkarodons didn't really give a shit. And this is where we see a lot of their history of them not caring about civilians. Not only do they engage ritualistic massacres of civilian populaces, but during the Badab War they earned a bloody reputation. For what happened was they annihilated whole worlds during the Badab War, which was a very small war in its own way. It was a very small civil war in a small sector. But still, the amount of people killed by it was astounding. And most of it was from the Karkarodons, the space sharks. Because what they were ordered to do was to deal with the hive cities and deal with the primary infrastructures of these cities. Well, they interpreted it as blow up these cities. Destroy them like you destroyed the other worlds. And while the star phantoms were prosecuting a guy who was in more or less in charge of the whole incident next thing the star phantoms knew they were getting orders <coughs> planet about to blow up <coughs> the fucking Karkarodons killed more loyalists in the retreat of the planet than they did chaos space marines on that planet and to this day, the Star Phantoms hold a very deep grudge for what happened to, the, to their own space marines because of the Karkarodon's actions of just carelessly destroying worlds, killing loyalists and traitors in this manner. But I think that's rather their own fault. They should have known ahead of time that this chapter is brutally efficient, that they will sabotage reactor cores of hive cities in order to be absolutely sure that every fucking traitor dies. Now the thing is with this chapter is that they aren't hateful like the marine malevolent. They don't hate you. They're not using hate as a weapon. If anything, when they engage in these bloody massacres, they're very emotionless. Their very leader, who is known simply as Tiberos, the Red Wake, when people saw his face, they realized that half of his face is pretty much skeletal from the Gene C degeneration kicking in. So he's basically a skeleton with black eyes. But not only that, when he's killing these traitors, there's no grin, there's no malicious smile, there is nothing, no emotion on his face. So to that, the Space Marines may engage in bloody, bloody engagements that would make even a corn worshiper, worshiper wet his pants. But the fact stands that these guys are very passionless. They engage in this because they have to. They engage in it because it's a necessity. They are terrorizing the populace because they know that if they don't do this, the populace could go traitor. And if it's not this populace that they're destroying, it might be the next populace they have to destroy. So in that, that is my whole lore review of the Karkarodons, also known as the Space Sharks. I hope you guys enjoyed their ruthless 
and brutal manner that they engage themselves in both warfare and in civilian conduct. And with that, have a good day.